Um, the Winnipeg Jets were shut out 3 0 by the San Jose Sharks, who prior to said loss were the worst team in the league. Now, this is significant for a few different reasons now. First off, the Calgary Flames the other day beat the LA Kings, a massive win for them. So the Western Wild Card race has just been a flat out embarrassing. Like, no one's grabbing you by the horns. It's just awful. So the Flyer beat the Flames. The Calgary Flames of this year are now just two points back of the Winnipeg Jets, but the games played are even at 75. Nashville are three points back of the Jets with two games in hand. Now, let's get into this because there was a lot after the game. Now, Daniel, you know I hate plus minus, and I think a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. However, I think something's worth mentioning here. The second worst goal differential in the Winnipeg Jets is minus 13 for Neil Pionk. Okay, defenseman plays a lot of minutes, fair enough. The worst, however, is minus 19. Do you know who that is? Is it Josh Morrissey? It's not Josh Morrissey. It's a forward. Uh, oh, it's, it's forward. Mo- it's Mark Shifley. Oh. The fifth worst, by the way, is at minus eight, and that's Blake Wheeler. Now, I'm going to go into some other numbers. They're a bit more relevant and a bit more sexy. Now, Elliot Freeman talking about the whole Pierre-Luc Dubois stuff and them in Montreal apparently talking about the trade. We're going to get up to that later. But I do think that's a bit of a lit a fire under people, but I don't think Pierre Luc Dubois has been nearly as bad. So I just want to talk about the fact here that this season he's currently at 25 goals and 58 points. He'll probably finish around 20 plus goals. Well, he's done that already, around 60 points. That's exactly the type of player Pierre Luc Dubois has been since he got into the league. Um, now, I think he's at two or three points in his last seven games. I think it's two goals. Not amazing, but definitely not part of the problem. And again, I don't like plus minus, but compared to those other two, he's a plus one. If you look at some of the negative players there, he's actually doing pretty well. Now, the reason I mention that, let's look at Blake uh, Wheeler and Mark Shifley. Mark Shifley does leave the Jets with three, uh, 38 goals. That's pretty freaking good. And he has three points more than Pierre Luc Dubois. However, Mark Shifley has not scored in nine games. So, now, right. how many games do you think it's been since Blake Wheeler scored a goal? 14. 21. Oh my gosh, I undersold that. <laughs> now, let me read you some quotes. A lot of this is from Kevin Weebs' article on Sportsnet. I'm going to read you a little bit from it right now um, because this is a nice little bit. Uh, these are some quotes from Rick Bonus, head coach, after the, uh, the game. Well, I'd say we created enough scoring chances. The offense gave us a chance to win the game. We just didn't score. Then the inconsistencies with some of our players is hurting us. Um, Some of these guys think they're giving us everything in their tank. They're dreaming. We have a lot of guys in there giving us everything they can. We just need a few more guys to jump on board. It's not over. We're still in eighth spot. We're going to find out what we're made of over the next little while. Um continuing part of the article here. The truth serum was flowing for bonus and he didn't stop there. When asked a follow-up question about how he can reach those players fighting with inconsistency, he basically said it was up to those guys to take a long, hard look in the mirror. Quote, how do you reach them? There comes a point when your personal pride has to take over. If someone has to go in there and point out to them, um, then there's a big problem right there. As I said, we're going to find out what we're made of and we're going to find out what everyone in that room is made of over the next little while. Um, wow. That is a very telling. By the way, I, just to remind you, this is something else that Kevin Weaves points out. At one point in the season, this team was 29 and one. You know what's weird? It sounds exactly like the team from last year with Paul Maurice, that they're struggling right towards the end to make the playoffs, to try to just sneak in there or waiting on the big guys to come back and do something about it. But I think they're running out of time. The inconsistency is there. And I think for so much, we talk about Pierre-Luc Dubois and what's going to be the future for him. What's going to happen with that? I think we really have to continue to look at what about Mark Shifley and especially Blake Wheeler. What is he now? He's like going to be 38. Um, he was drafted in 2004. I'll double check that quickly. I don't know if he's if Blake Wheeler's that old, but I think he's definitely he has to be at least 34. He's 36. He'll be 37 in August. Okay, okay. That was one off. But mm-hmm. yeah, like if you're gonna still expect that player to be at that level for like I even anyone who is in I think his prime years, like these we we've seen these cold streaks before and 
I, I don't know. The Jets have to do something if they want to continue this because I really do like their defensive core. I think for everything that has happened with them with free agency the past few years, they've they've built it back pretty well. And I don't want them to waste Connor Hellebuck. I think he's a fantastic. No. He's 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 bleeding me right now in fantasy. <laughs> like the last few games, I'm not gonna. Be, I'm gonna be honest. He's, he's, I, he's Daniel. Daniel, you've had Linus Allmark the whole year. I don't feel bad for you at all. Okay. Um. And it, it's just it's just one of those really great goalies that I don't think you're giving him what he needs. Um. No. We talked about it too in his Vesna year. He was burnt out by the time he they got into the playoffs. I don't think they've really address that too much um yeah just a lot of money on that team but not a lot of scoring consistently well forget wheeler's age for a second here because you gave him 8.2 million that was patrick line's money let's not get around that i the moment that contract was signed i remember thinking well there goes patrick line and then you look what happened um not to mention like this is the guy who was stripped the captaincy like you gotta think about that for a second. And it all started so well. I remember seeing Jets fans saying, like, really standing up for Shifley, and maybe he was really turning around turning around in his two-way game, and that seems to have just disappeared. Um listen, they need they need a reset so badly. And at this point, seeing the results in the effort of Shifley and Wheeler, maybe it wasn't just a Paul Maurice thing, because mm-hmm. now we're seeing it with Rick Bonus. There is one question I have, and I'm starting to think maybe this is an, is, a, is an organizational thing. Because for the life of me, I need to know why Nick Ehlers is not being played as much. He was averaging like 13 or 14 minutes. Like, like that's something I, I need someone to answer me for. Like, why, do these, why does this team hate Scandinavian skill players? Oh, yeah. He's like, they're leading one of the, isn't he like basically one of their leading scorers this last stretch? And he's getting less minutes than Cal Connor. He had only thirteen fifty of ice time, including five shifts in the second period. From this article, um, I'll get. I have their stats up here. Um, he's hurt, so he was hurt, obviously. So he's not up there. Um, let's just go to total scores because yeah, he's got thirty one points in the thirty nine games he's played. Um, I'll check his game logs quickly. Um, at least NHL.com gets those up quick enough, even though the whole site's a bit uh, questionable. So he hasn't scored in his last three games. Then he was his last fourth one. He had a goal. But it's it's hard to get on a guy for not producing like that when you don't play him. Um, and it's been such a long-term issue. So, do, 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 do. I mean, in his last one, two, three, four, five, in his last six games, he's got two goals. But he, in those games, oh my God, Daniel. I'm, he hasn't played more than 18 minutes in a game since March 8th. Oh my god. That's just not enough. Like there's a game where he got 13 minutes here. So, like he's a good player and he's still even if lately he hasn't been been producing like the rest of the team. Um it's clearly a guy who you're just not playing enough. Like that's just there's no reason everyone knows how good he is and the fact that he is what's his average ice time here? I'm trying to find it. Um but the fact that it's that low is just not acceptable. Plus Right now, he's at a 7% shooting percentage, and his career is like 11%. So that's also a pretty well sign that he's having a down year, even if he's nearly like one of their top scorers still. Yeah. So play him more. I know he's injured, so, but yeah, when there's the opportunity. So let's also look at another thing here. So Marco D'Amico, who obviously covers the Habs, had a nice little article. So we'll go talk about Pierre Luc Dubois because obviously the big thing is I think we're all pretty much sure that he's going to be a Montreal Canadian. We know that's going to happen, right? Mm-hmm. So think of it like this, Daniel. This is the situation that uh, Marco puts out there. So the Canadians have one option up their sleeve that they can do to really hamper the Winnipeg Jets, but it is a term that I think Habs fans everywhere are scared of. And you're going to know why I mention it now. They can offer sheet Pierre Luc Dubois. Now, <laughs> if you do it at a reasonable number, I think Marco had it like six or seven ish or something around there. So, okay, let's say the Jets 
go out and they take the compensation, right? Okay, they're going to get some draft picks for him depending on the level of, of the AAV of the deal, right? That's not a big problem. If the Montreal Canadiens don't sort of like what they're trying to give up, you know what I mean, right? It's either if you mm-hmm. like the package already now or we're going to offer sheet as a number and the compensation is going to be enough. I, I don't know. Okay, we can see that. On the other side of things, this is something the Canadians could sort of hamper the Jets by. Because if the Winnipeg Jets decide to not take the offer sheet, sorry, if they decide to match it, then they can't trade Pierre-Luc Dubois for a year, which would then walk him to UFA without them being able to trade him, which would basically then stop any other team from being able to talk to him about trades and maybe extensions, which would stop the 5% chance of him going anywhere else, which I still don't. don't. Like He's just going to be a hab, but... If the Jets really, really, really want to play hardball on this whole thing, realistically, the Canadians could just offer sheet. Now, I think you, know, you have this... to be careful in potentially giving up a first round yeah. for him. So, you know, depending, because next year, I'd expect the Canadians to still be bad. But if they wanted to be really, really sneaky about this, they could do that. You know what this sounds exactly like right now? What? Phil Kessel and the Leafs with going from Boston. Because remember um, Brian Burke, he outlined it in his book. Where he's like, went up to Peter Shrey. He's like, listen, Peter, yeah, if you yeah. don't trade me Kessel, I'm going to offer sheet him tomorrow. Man, he's the best. So they could do that. And here's the thing. This is a concern I had because obviously the cock and Emmy offer sheet still stings, right? Now, signing an offer sheet and going to Carolina is one thing. But if we know something else, the worst city to sign in, and we know this for a fact, the one place players do not want to go to, is Winnipeg. So mm-hmm. let's say the the Pierre Luc Dubois deal somehow gets done before Caulfield, right? Then the Jets are like, let's go offer she co Caulfield. Is he really want to go from Montreal to Winnipeg? You really think that's gonna happen? So there's an advantage there for any team, really, if they really, really wanted to pick on Winnipeg. I mean, they probably wouldn't because the NHL are they're afraid to sort of step on anyone's shoes, but it's I am as well right now. You know, I don't know who's listening. I don't want to say anything about Winnipeg. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. But I understand. It is it is a sticky situation right now. I don't think the Jets... I think we, we mention a lot sometimes of other teams where like they have to keep the ball rolling to get the fans in. And I think sometimes... I, I do still think about that with Winnipeg. I know it's been more than 10 years since they returned. So I don't think like that early enthusiasm, despite the, the losing years, will continue to sustain them. But I think they're a team like Nashville you've mentioned where they still have to go for it despite the fact they sold at the deadline. Um, I think with the Jets, if they keep sinking deeper into not being a you know, basically a non playoff team going forward, that's I think that's even gonna hurt it even more of their marketability to players wanting to go there. Mm-hmm. Listen, Winnipeg. And I think, isn't Shifley up this year, too? There is. Go check that. Yeah, because, listen, it doesn't look good for them right now. It does not look good for them right now. Um, Because if this ends poorly and Shifley leaves, and like at, at that point, Hellebuck's probably going to want out, then they're almost going to have to be forced to go into a rebuild or whatever, because, I mean, then who do you still have? Yeah. No, I, you know, you saw, sorry, I should be obviously you still have like Perfetti and you still have Connor in that, but Okay, so I have the information up. You want to hear it? Sure. Okay, so they still have so Blake Wheeler, Mark Trifley are have one more year after this year. Oh, were they still have another year? Really? Yeah. yeah, and then yeah, Pierre Luc Dubois after this year, RFA. Um, you know, they're not really. The thing is, after the next year, they have to really worry about things because that's when they all become UFAs. Nino Nierreiter as well. I know that's not the biggest name there, but, you know, four million off the books. And then they're only going to really have Cal Connor until 2026. And then they're going to have Nick Ehlers for one more year in 2025. Ah. And for their defense, um, it's really only Josh Morrissey and then 
two or three, two more years of Nate Schmidt and Neil Pionk. So here's the big question: um, How old is Connor Hellebuck? He is 29. Uh, what's his contract like right now? He's a UFA after 2024. Uh, so he has to. So for the sake of of Connor Hellebuck's prime and really going to win, aka the rest of this contract, he really has to think about looking at the past couple of years and how this offseason could shape out for the Jets, he has to really think about it. And if he wants to go, it doesn't matter if you still have all those other guys we met. So being there, if you still have Perfetti Connor in that, because mm-hmm. without Hellebuck, you're screwed. You're, you're screwed. Yeah. You're not competing in the Central without a goalie like that. Like, you're, you're just not going to. So they... That's, they have no one in the system either. Like, I'm looking at their goalies right now. Nobody. Well, I mean, even if they did, it's not like it's not Keller Hellebuck. Yeah. Unless they go out and try and get Carter Hart. Mm. We know there's going to be some sort of goalie carousel in the offseason. Two articles have starting to be written about it, but there we go, man. There we go. Yeah. Um, so really, if you want to go for it for this team, it's either this year or next year. And you're not winning this year because no. you're just not... Might not make the playoffs to begin yeah, with. Yeah, you're not. You're fighting with the Flames to stay in the playoffs, right? That's no one wants to be there. And not to mention, I mean, you have to be in an Eastern team if you miracle run your way to the finals anyway. And I don't, I don't, I only see like Vegas or maybe Colorado somehow beating a team in the East. Edmonton, just a Stuart Skinner scaring me a little bit. They can do I trust him in the in the playoffs mm-hmm. against one of those teams? So yeah, like the Jets aren't gonna make any like they man, I don't envy Shevel Day off. I don't envy him. No. I this may be the end of the core. We may, we don't know. Two I years. mean, maybe it's time for Chevy to go too. Not that he, he shouldn't really have a job right now to be in with, but I mean he got a little lucky that his name wasn't mentioned a ton in that report. Yeah. 